In the previous chapter we explored the superposition of waves. We discussed the role of coherence. We uncovered constructive, destructive interference, standing waves. We did that for waves of the same frequency and amplitude, oscillating in the same plane. Here we're going to expand this. We're going also to review the most relevant interferometers and explore what knowledge we have learned from them. Let's consider again two beams of the same frequency, propagating along different lines S1 and S2, but with different amplitudes, E1 and E2. Phases V1 and V2 are referred to their individual paths. Both light rays cross their paths at point P, where the waves are going to interfere. The electric fields add up together, we already introduced the radiance of the beam of light as epsilon naught c times the average of e times e. Remember that because the oscillations of the electromagnetic waves are of the order of 10 to the 14, 10 to the 15 hertz for visible light, we need to work with average of this fast oscillation if we want to explain and understand phenomena that we can actually see or measure with detectors. The radiance at point P is the, then epsilon naught c, the average of the electric field times the electric field at point P, which written explicitly looks like where we clearly see the effect of each individual irradiance, E1 and E2, but also the interference term E1 times E2. If you have taken quantum mechanics, you will recognize in this interference term all the amazing madness of the quantum world. For each of the individual irradiance, we have that Because the average of a cosine square where the oscillations are fast with respect to the time of average, which is the case, in this is one half, then the interference term is the dot product of both electric fields. Because it is a dot product, its result depends on the angle between both fields. If they are parallel, we can have maximum constructive interference or maximum destructive interference. If they are perpendicular, they will, there will be no interference in that case. This can already give you some ideas of how important is polarization and how interesting phenomena you can get from it. Let's write in more detail this interference term. Which, using again the trigonometric identity of the product of two cosines, Now, let's pay some attention to this. The average of a cosine function is zero, but we need to be careful with the time over which we average. Remember that we are averaging because visible light oscillates in the hundreds or thousands of terahertz. So, the average of such a fast cosine is going to be zero. That makes the first cosine with two omega t equal to zero. But the second cosine is of a phase difference, and this need not be a large number at all. More even, if the light is of the same wavelength, this happens to be a constant at point P. So we simplify the radiance at P as epsilon naught c, epsilon 1 arrow times E naught 2 arrow times the average of cosine of delta, where cosine of delta is a constant. With this, we can now write the total irradiance at the crossing point P as If we make both electric fields to be parallel, then this simplifies as
We'll talk more about this in the next video. Meanwhile, may science be with you.